Hello, John Talley here with Partzilla.com. Today we're working with our 2011 Polaris Sportsman 850. Specifically, we're going to look at the braking system, and I'm going to show you how to bleed it. It's a fairly simple system. It has actually two what they would call master cylinders. You have one on the front, which is just lever operated. It controls the front calipers as well as it has a small connection that goes back to the rear brake caliper as well. All right, and we also have the rear brake pedal which has a master cylinder on it as well. The fill point is actually up on the front of the machine behind this cover, and I'm gonna show you how to access that in a little bit. So let me get her up in the air a little bit, get the front tires pulled off, and we'll start with the front brakes. All right, guys, I've got to set up to uh, bleed the front brakes. And the one you want to start with first is the, uh, the caliper this is, that is furthest away from uh, your master cylinder. So the, the procedure is like this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull this cap. We're going to go ahead and fill this up, you know, almost to the top, because what we're trying to do is flush, you know, the fluid through it. Uh, now, when are you going to have to do this? Well, whenever you do a rebuild of one of the calipers or the master cylinder itself, anything that would introduce air into the system. Another thing you want to take into consideration is uh, brake fluid is hydro hygroscopic, and what that means is that it absorbs water. So just your vehicle, by being in an air environment, or a wet environment, it's gonna absorb water into it, so you really need to flush it out at least once a year. All right, once I get this cap pulled and get it filled up, what you wanna do is pump it up and then hold it in. And at that point, you've got a 10 millimeter wrench with a little bit of hose on the end of the bleeder valve. And you've got pressure on the handle up there. You open the valve, and when you do that, the handle will come all the way in and it'll start pushing fluid and or air through the system. All right, you wanna keep it held in until you close it back. Then you can release it, pump it back up, and then repeat the procedure. All right, to access our front brake reservoir, we just need to remove these two T20 Torx screws. And we're gonna take off our cover. Fill it up as much as we can. Reinstall the cover, but you don't have to tighten it back down. Otherwise, this little booger will spray uh, brake fluid all over you. All right, this one uses a DOT4 type brake fluid. I'm actually using some from Honda. It's a dot four. It's just a uh, specification, and I'm fairly certain that um, Polaris has their own brand of. DOT4, but either one will work fine. It's up to you which way you want to go on that. We're basically just going to put the cover back in place and just loosely put in the uh, T20 um, screws because we're going to be pulling it off each time to check it because we don't want air to get down and back into the system. You know, that's what we're trying to eliminate, right? All right? Pump it up, hold, release your valve, close valve, pump it up, release, close, just keep repeating it. I mean, this is the manual way to do it. They do make brake bleeding um, kits, particularly Mighty Vac makes a couple of different ones where you can actually use your shop air, create a vacuum. All you do is connect it onto the bleeder valve, open it up, and it just draws it straight through but we're going to do it the hard way. All right, we've done that about six, about six times now, so I think it's time to go ahead and pull that cover and see where our, our, our uh, level is. Yep, we did that just in time because it was getting close. Be really careful with brake fluid because it will damage paint 
and this nice camo finish that we have on this unit. I mean, if you let any spill on the unit, you want to wipe it off almost immediately and then clean it up because it will do bad things to a, a finish. What we're going to be after here is I want to go through this procedure about three times on either side for the front. That amount of fluid, that should have flushed everything all the way through. As you're doing this, you want to keep an eye on your hose right here. Make sure there's no air getting pushed out of the caliper. There may be some in the beginning, but by this point, it should be just clear fluid coming through there. And that's what we've got. So that's a good sign. All right. Well, you've got the idea. So what I'm gonna do is go to the other side, repeat the same procedure, and uh, you know, that, that will uh, complete the bleeding process for just the front end. Uh, once I finish that, then I'll show you how to uh, get to the, uh, the rear bleed screw and the, uh, the reservoir, and we'll get it done. All right, guys, you've been watching me just dump fluid in here as we've been, uh, been bleeding the system. But when you get ready and you're happy with the, uh, the amount of flow coming out of it, and it's got a nice uh, hard feel to it, um, you want to do the final fill. And to do that, you basically want it about six to eight millimeters from the top edge and there happens to be a little casting line about right here can you see that and that's where we want to fill it to all right about right there so with that we can go ahead and put on our uh, top cover and the front will be complete And that's it. All right, with the, uh, the front brakes complete, let's turn our attention to the rear. But we actually have to start at the front, believe it or not, because Polaris put the reservoir all the way up here. So we need to remove this uh, little front storage compartment and then a couple of Torx screws on that front piece of plastic. I believe that's a T25, which it is. All right, what you're going to see once I pull this front cover off, it's actually two reservoirs. You do not want to confuse the two because one is for your rear brake system and the other one with the yellow cap, that's part of your uh, front drive fluid. I don't think you want to put brake fluid in there. It would not be a good ending. This is the one we want right here. Don't want to get any dirt in there. All right, once again, it uses just regular DOT4 fluid. So we're going to go ahead and fill it almost all the way up to the top. Just like that. This one, you should be able to leave the cap off without any danger of it spitting back on us. All right, we've got our reservoir full. We've got our hose on, a little eight millimeter uh, to break the bleeder screw loose. So what you wanna do is go ahead and pump it up, hold, release, close, pump it up, release, Close, pump it up. And as you can see, fluid's starting to uh, get pushed through. All right, we should be able to do this about five or six times, and then we need to check our uh, reservoir 
Because the last thing we want to have happen is to get air up at the top and get it into the system. All right, the master reservoir is, uh, as you can tell, a long distance away from uh, where this caliper is. So to fully purge and get all the old fluid out, you're going to need to do this about 10 times. Now's about the time you're going to be wishing that uh, you went ahead and bought one of those Mighty Vacs. Because it would make quick work of this. But this is the procedure. And like I said, you just keep doing it over and over again. Making sure you've got a steady stream of fluid coming through this uh, little tube. And making sure your, your pedal has a, a firm feel to it. Once you close that valve, pump it up a couple of times, then you ought to have uh, some pressure back on it where it doesn't want to move all the way down. All right, guys, we've gone through the bleeding procedure at least 10 times. So I'm very confident that we've got new fluid throughout the system. Last thing we need to do is go ahead and set the level. Now your min mark, the minimum is right here. That's actually where it's sitting at the moment. And the max is all the way up here. Now here's something to keep in mind. Um, do not go all the way to the max unless you're positive that you have a new set of brake pads on there. Reason being, if the brake pads are worn out, you bleed the system, fill it all the way up, and then you go to replace the pads, well then you're going to be compressing your, your piston all the way back into your caliper and it's going to overfill this, or it's going to bleed over. We don't want that to happen. So let's go ahead and fill it up to the max because I know that we have new brake pads on the back of this one. Right there. Put your seal back in and put your cap back on. All right, other than putting the, uh, the rear wheel back on it and putting on this front cover and then the, the front storage compartment, yeah, this is pretty much done. So if you have any questions or comments or something I missed, something you couldn't see, leave them down below and I'll either answer it or we'll look into it you know, to get your questions answered. Um, really wasn't a whole lot of parts to be used on this one, but we are going to go further where we're going to actually rebuild uh, the calipers on this machine as well as uh, replacing the, uh, the brake disc all the way around. So you'll need this uh, brake bleeding procedure you know, to get that done because this will be the final step that you'll end up doing. So with that, um, I just want to say thanks for watching and we will see you next time.